Great deception on many different aspects. Last part to the dream. As I was escaping, I seen these men on stage dressed as women, and they had to do all these poses and doing these stretch kicks to the side, and one stilts at some point, and the woman was saying they're only humans, because the guy on the stilt was worried about doing it. Interpretation. The men posing as women is part of a great deception, and when they were doing many kicks and poses, this represents the great deception coming in many different aspects in different areas. As they were posed as women, this represents the false churches and their deceptions on how they are leading the sheep astray. And when they were doing their kicks, that represents these deceivers taking it to the next levels. Matthew thirteen twenty two. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. This verse here is talking about the prosperity preachers. Take a look at the words used. Care of the world, materialism, deceitfulness of riches, wealth and power, choke the word, twisting the word for their own personal gain. Unfruitful, not possessing any of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Instead, possessing evil fruits, greed, malice and deceit, selfishness, wickedness, the false teachers care only of one thing, themselves. They only care about filling the seats in the congregations, not about the souls that attend the congregations that need discipleship. They care only of selfish gain, extending their money, their wealth and power. Twisting the word against people who do not have the gift of discernment it's not about being gullible, it has more to do with the fact they do not have the gift of discernment, which is very important to have, as this gift will help you discern from who is true and who is false. A true teacher sent by God will have your best interest at heart. They will care for your soul and help you in any way they can, according to the gifts Father has given them to have. They will teach on the word with the interpretation of the Holy Spirit, not with the interpretation of man. They will not teach on what you want, but instead on what you need. What your souls need to hear, like forgiveness, humbleness and fearing God, yeah, repentance of sins and living a holy lifestyle instead of a sinful one. Materialism what is materialism? Materialism is things of the world. These things are not heavenly in any kind of form. They are earthly. For example, having techno or rap music in a congregation, for one, you are unable to focus on the worship because your mind is getting too focused on the worldly music and is not glorifying God yet. Secondly, Father dislikes this music as it is worldly and not of him. If you notice, the word rap is a shortened version of rape, something being forceful. True worship comes in many different ways, but it all starts at the heart. You would play an instrument of any kind, drums, harps, violins, piano, guitar. And with this music, the entire congregation would sing what is in their hearts. The Holy Spirit would bring order into this place as the congregation are singing. So the music would all flow, for God is not a God of disorder. Let's take a look at some scriptures about the false ones. Luke 6, 24-26 But woe unto you that are rich! For ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. This is also linked with Amos 6, 1-7. Matthew 24, 24. 
For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. If it were possible. 2 Timothy 4, 3-4 For the time will come, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, and do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Acts twenty twenty eight or 30 Take heed therefore unto yourselves, unto all the flock, over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. The deceptions were also in different levels of deception. These deceptions will come in different aspects. Deceptions through education, teaching the children of earth worldly ways, subjects of lies and deceit, getting them to dress with immodesty, thus losing their dignity, speaking in disrespectful manners with their parents, teachers and elderly, getting certain people to believe they were born into homosexuality, when in fact this is false. A girl was born a girl and a boy was born a boy. The demonic principle of a boy wanting to change their gender is a lie constructed by the demonic forces led by the leaders of the Illuminati. Worldly lies in order to take people away from the truth, leading people into the evolution theory and away from the truth that creator made the universe as well as human souls that live upon earth. Health. Authorities lying as the supposed medicines and cures but really a devastating vaccine for the coronavirus. This vaccine is not a solution or a cure. It is false. It is the mark of the beast. It cannot be undone. Reject it at all costs. You must deny. Jesus is the only way. Do not take this. Trust in Jesus. Revelation 14, 9-11 And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark on his forehead or on his hand, in the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receives the mark of his name. Do not accept the vaccine under any circumstances. Do not accept it. You will have to make a stand against this vaccine. Fitness. Yoga, for instance, is actually satanic worship. All the different moves is prayer positions to Satan. Yoga also involves summoning the Kundalini spirit, which is actually a counterfeit of the Holy Spirit. This Kundalini spirit comes into the mega church congregations, pretending to be the Holy Spirit, and will get people hyped, for example, get them to crawl around and bark like dogs, do holy laughters, which is actually witches cackling through them, do all these signs and wonders in order. For more wealth and power. A worldwide deceptions of angels, which are really the fallen angels. They will make a deception to explain away the rapture of God's people. God's people will be taken, and the lying deceiving leaders of the earth will deceive people with the alien deception to lie to the people of the earth. They have been preparing the inhabitants of the earth of aliens through movies radio broadcasts and all kinds of theories to throw you away from the truth. The rapture will occur. Do not fall for the deception of aliens, aka false fallen angels.
Interpretation continued. They were also on stilts, which represents exalting themselves, exalting themselves high above everyone else, making themselves feel more important. Luke 18, 14 For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted, abased, bringing them low, humbling them in a disciplined manner. Proverbs 12, 20 Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. Proverbs 30, 32 to 33 If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought evil, lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter, and the wringing of the nose bringeth forth blood. So the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. Meaning stop yourself before you say an evil thing or do an evil thing that you're imagining within your heart. Proverbs 29, 12 If a ruler hawk into lies, all his servants are wicked. Titus 1, 15-16 Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Abominable, meaning very bad, terrible, sinning. Reprobate, an undisciplined person, sinner who is not of the elect, whom has a spirit of corruption. 1 Peter 2, 1-3 Where falling aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies, and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted, that the Lord is gracious. Malice, desire to harm someone, wrongful intention, and guile, meaning sly or cunning intelligence, trickster. Hypocrisy, someone who pretends to have certain beliefs, attitudes or feelings, but they really don't. Example, someone who says they care of the environment, but are constantly littering, or say perhaps, Someone may say to tell you, let go of greed, but that person is being greedy themselves. That person is then being a hypocrite. Envy, quite close to being jealous, but slightly different. Resenting someone else's possessions, qualities or blessings. Wanting what that person has for themselves, but in a selfish manner. Hating the person because they have the things that you don't have. Notice here how this is the tenth commandment. Thou shalt not covet their neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet their neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, meaning donkey, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Exodus twenty seventeen. What this commandment means is not wanting what your neighbor has, or anything that belongs to him or her. By not wanting these things, it prevents someone from developing the sin envy. Isaiah 5.15 And the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. Lofty, imposing height, exalting oneself. James 4.6 God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Now for example, Say you are proud of your friend because they have achieved something. This is not being prideful, as you are being happy and producing pure intentions towards your friend. Whereas say you think too much of yourself, all for the wrong reasons, and wish only to exalt yourself instead of thanking God and glorifying Him for bringing you to your achievement. This is being prideful. Pridefulness, that is a sin, is when you are exalting yourself with unpure intentions are being selfish and rude, thinking only of oneself and being arrogant with your actions and words. Pride is about my glory, humility is about God's glory. Interpretation continued. The woman telling these men that they are only humans, saying about the audience what was revealed in my spirit while in a dream 
was that this woman was a fallen angel. Who the fallen angels are? Jude 1, 6-7 And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. 2 Peter 2 4 For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. Ephesians 6 12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Revelation 12, 7-9 And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. He is also known as the trickster. The angels who were cast out of heaven are known as the fallen angels, as they have fallen from the grace of God and sinned against him. This is where the name comes from. These fallen angels do not care for you, nor like you. They only ever want to kill you and destroy you. First they do it by these deceptions, hypnotize you with their witchcraft and spells. Then once they have you in these deceptions, they curl around and deceive your mind, make you think false things, and may convince you to destroy yourself. This is manipulation. Or they will make you think that you can willfully sin and still go to heaven. This is false also. You must leave your sinful lifestyle and live in daily repentance, believing in Yeshua Jesus, the one who fought to have you free. These fallen angels do not even care for life. They show little regard to life. Christ, his high priesthood and his eternal sacrifice, the compassionate high priest, Hebrews 4, 14, 5 to 10. Melchizedek priesthood, greater than the Levitical, Hebrews 7, 11 to 14. Melchizedek priesthood binds with an eternal oath, Hebrews 7, 15 to 19. Christ's priesthood operates beyond death, Hebrews 7, 20 to 26. The perfection of Christ as the heavenly high priest, Hebrews 7, 27 to 28. Christ officiates in the divine temple, Hebrews 8, 1 to 5. Christ is the mediator of a better covenant. Hebrews 8, 6 to 13. The officiousness of Christ's sacrifice. Hebrews 9, 11 to 14. Christ seals the new covenant in his blood. Hebrews 9, 15 to 28. Christ's sacrifice brings remission of sins. Hebrews 10, 11 to 18. Christ died for the ungodly and sinners. Romans 5, 6 to 11. God has brought you back with Christ's blood. 1 Peter 1, 7 to 21. Officiate, in charge of something, perform ceremony. Mediator, someone who pleads on our behalf. Efficacy, ability to produce a desire or intended result. Two Peter three fourteen to eighteen, wherefore beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found in firm and peace, without spot and blemish, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, 
in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Be therefore beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware, lest you also being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. One John four one to six, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And that is the spirit of the Antichrist, which of ye have heard that it should come, and even now. Is it in the world? Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God, heareth us. He that is not of God, hear not us. <laughs> 